Hello, I'm JW. Now, if you wanted to turn, say, some lights or something on automatically, so of course they came on at night and uh, switched off later, then it's fairly likely you might use something like this. And uh, this can actually be used for uh, immersion heaters and things as well. And this is sort of made of plastic. Astoundingly, it's actually made in the UK, as it's a uh, Smith's one. And this is actually from 1992, so uh, this itself is uh, fairly old. And of course these days are even more cheaply made and uh, have those dreadful things on the side. You can just press the uh, segments in and they uh, generally last for about 10 minutes before either failing completely or melting and setting on fire. But of course in the past, before plastic was available, you wouldn't use one of those. You were more likely to use something like this. Now what we've got here is a time switch. And this is made by Horseman. And as you see, it comes in this rather substantial metal enclosure. Uh, so it's just painted green there with a bit of uh, damage and whatever. Three holes here for fixing to the wall. And on the front here, we've got the on and off switch for manual operation. So it's just on and off. It's spring loaded so it returns to the center position. And a small window here so you can actually see the current time. So a little pointer there in the part of the clock dial. Hinge at the bottom, and of course at the top here I've got this section which you can open. And it just folds back and then the front of course will open up. Now inside here at the top we've got the actual uh, clock and the switch mechanism. And on the lower section here we have the plate and the label which shows the wiring of the device. So uh, let's go and have a look at those. So here's the plate inside the front cover. And as you can see it's made by the uh, Horseman Gear Company Limited, Albin Works, Bath, England and uh, 200 or 250 volts, uh, 50 cycles or 50 hertz. And this particular one is a type WSM and rated for 10 amps AC. And the uh, serial number is A66574. Now, a horseman are actually still in business, but of course they don't make things like this anymore. The uh, name continues, but uh, obviously they don't make uh, heavy duty stuff like this. And we've got the wiring diagram here. Very straightforward, just the three terminals there. So you've got the uh, positive as they've marked it here, or the incoming positive, although of course it's actually uh, AC so it's not really positive at all, uh, negative or your uh, neutral effectively, and then of course your load connects to the third terminal over here. And uh, it's important to note here that how the switching is actually done, uh, it says here the uh, concealed mercury tube switch gear connections to terminals to mercury tube are already made, so that's inside. And yes this does actually have a glass tube in the back here, which is filled with mercury. You can just about see it uh, in the back there. We'll have a look at that in more detail later on. So uh, this piece of equipment is actually classed as hazardous waste because of course mercury is a highly toxic material. Certainly not something you want to be spilling or uh, getting anywhere. And we've got the little uh, window here that is actually glass, just held in with a couple of screws. And then over here we've just got this uh, piece which actually goes through to the manual control on the front. Small spring to return it to the central position. And when the lid is closed, that simply presses over the mechanism in the top here. Now the timer itself is very straightforward. This is a 24-hour uh, model, so we've got the uh, time marked around here for uh, one day. And of course we've got day and night indicated here, so we've used the same numbering for both sides. And it's only got one on and off uh, per day, so of course it will be generally used for lighting and things. So, so switching on at uh, the evening, and again switching off sometime in the morning, although of course you could use this for pretty much anything you wanted, so switching on heating or something for example, so turning on at the beginning of the day and uh, switching off at the end. And then here's our three terminals as shown on the wiring diagram here. And uh, the piece here is what fits onto that control on the front, so that's your manual on and off, so it simply moves the lever manually like that. And the automatic operation is just simply done by this dial, which of course will rotate in the direction shown. Then you've got your on and off levers here, which uh, of course again move the uh, lever to the appropriate position. Now the case is, uh, as you see, substantially thick metal here, and this is a heavy item. It's certainly not some kind of flimsy thing that's going to uh, fall apart. Inside it's all painted. Some of the paint is uh, lifting away at the back there. Most of these uh, parts here are actually brass, not simply brass coloured, as a lot of stuff would be these days. And then the uh, so that's the sort of self-contained motor and clock part. And then take the switching is actually done over here by the pieces here, and it's just that single lever coming out to actually activate the on and off function. So let's take that out of the casing, so have a closer look at the back. So the metal box then uh, simply just a cast metal enclosure with the two threaded studs, 
And at the bottom here, we've got three holes where the wiring, of course, would enter. And we've got this plate here, which is presumably for some sort of uh, insulation with the wires that come out of the back. And uh, it's interesting that they've actually put the three holes, which would result in your line in neutral going through different holes, which uh, I'm not really supposed to do because it theoretically results in the uh, heating of the metal between. Although, as we've seen in a previous video, even at fairly high currents of the uh, 100 amps range, that doesn't actually seem to be an issue at all. So uh, certainly something which requires further investigation. And the holes come through to the other side, of course, and I've got these little uh, grommet things already installed. I'm not entirely sure what these are. They feel to be uh, fairly hard plastic material, so... But uh, nevertheless, that will do, obviously, to stop them being damaged against the sharp metal edges. Now, the clock unit says a self-contained piece here, so you've got your uh, clock on this side. Three connection terminals for the uh, line, neutral, and the switched output. And on the back here, we can see the uh, mercury uh, switching part itself. And as you can see, it's a glass tube, and you can see the mercury... Uh, flowing around in there quite freely. And we've got some uh, connections already in place here, suggested on the instructions. So two red wires here which go into the casing, of course that would drive the clock motor. And then these two black uh, wires here, of course, go to the mercury switch, and that's what's actually going to be turning the outgoing connection on and off. So essentially your uh, line will come in here via the uh, mercury switch here, and then when it's actually uh, connected on it will go out via the terminal there. And then the neutral here is simply provided so the clock is always connected between the line and neutral so that it actually operates. And because this is a mercury switch, it's actually essential that this thing is operated in the uh, horizontal position like this. We're sort of looking at this from above here. Because, of course, otherwise the uh, mercury is not going to actually run to the end of the tube as required. So this casing here with its uh, three mounting studs will definitely have to be mounted on the wall in the uh, upright position. Otherwise, of course, the thing isn't actually going to work properly or at all. Now the uh, switching mechanism here, say, is simply from this uh, bar here, and if I place this down on the surface, you can then see how the uh, tube actually moves in the two positions. So if we just turn this here, see so in this position the mercury is essentially filling the tube on both sides, and then in the off position it obviously all flows down to the one end, so of course there's no connection between the two inside. So on there, let's see, it's... Uh, filling the tube there. Uh, off, of course, it all flows down to one end, so no internal connection. Now here's a close look up at the uh, mercury switching tube itself. And you see it's very simple. It's simply a glass tube here, which is completely sealed. This is where the uh, end was uh, heated and uh, closed over. And at the bottom here, we've got two uh, wires or metallic contacts that go inside. So there's one here, and then one here at the other end. Now this white material is actually basically just a colouring or paint or something for some reason there. And uh, if you look in the end here, you see that in this position with the mercury down at one end, there's actually nothing on the contact here, so it's all down there. And then of course when it tilts to uh, go to the on position, the mercury flows so that it actually covers the whole bottom of the tube. And of course being conductive, it's then connecting the terminals here and here together. So the current will flow in by one uh, through the mercury and then out to the other side. And again, when it tilts the other way, then, of course, the circuit is broken. Now, it's actually left a little spot of mercury there, but uh, if you look down this side the end, you'll see that there's no actual continuous line of it in there until, of course, it actually tilts the other way and flows back. And it's sitting there because there's presumably a little uh, indent in the tube. If you tip it up far enough, then it will uh, flow down to the end with the rest. Now, mercury switches are actually very effective, and they're also extremely reliable. But of course, uh, they're not used anymore because uh, mercury is classed as a hazardous material. Certainly it's toxic. And of course, being glass, it's actually uh, relatively easy to break, although once it's stored on the wall, that's uh, fairly unlikely. But uh, nevertheless, mercury is something which is uh, seldom used for anything these days. Even uh, mercury thermometers are pretty much uh, not available. And uh, it's, say, it's an incredibly simple mechanism. It's just relying on gravity to uh, move the mercury from one end to the other. As I said before, it's absolutely essential that if this was installed, it was installed on the wall uh, actually level, otherwise the switching part wouldn't actually work. Now here's the uh, close-up of the clock face here, and so you've got this little red uh, mark here just to indicate the current time, and then the on and off markers here are actually engraved there, that's the off one, and as it comes past, it's simply a mechanical thing which uh, also reacts with the pointer there, and that moves the uh, switch into the on or 
off position depending on which one it is. And again, the odd one here again is uh, just brass with the on legend inscribed in the front. And again, that just snaps over like that. So that uh, pretty much continues uh, continuously at whatever times you have set. Here's the switching arrangement, and the bar here is actually from the timer there, just over to the right. And essentially that just moves either to the upper or lower position, depending on which of the on or off sections is being used. And the manual set is simply from this uh, lever here, so it's just a question of turning it to the on and off position as required. And I'll say a little spring there just to return it to a sort of mid position. And so what it's doing is that uh, other piece on the back here is just being moved to tilt the mercury tube to the appropriate angle. So incredibly simple thing, but uh, again, extremely reliable. So really not a great deal that can go wrong. And again, there's a view of the uh, mercury tube there. So that's the off position and then the on position. Now for setting the uh, on and off times that you would like, it's simply a matter of aligning the uh, on and off indicators here with the desired time. And of course, here's lock in position. And then to unlock, it's just a question of lifting the lever here. And then you can easily move the indicators to whichever time or hour you would like. So slide those to the appropriate places. And then to lock in position, just press the lever down again. And then they will be uh, securely fixed in position so they don't obviously move when they come around to the mechanical switching part at the top. Now just remove the actual uh, clock part from the rear casing, I'll just to show you what's inside, and uh, quite a straightforward arrangement, just got an electric motor on the back here, you see there's two red wires coming down for the main power, and that simply comes through the front here, and you've got various uh, gears in here, all of which are brass there, and this sort of worm drive there, which uh, of course reduces the speed down so that when you get to the front here it's basically one revolution per day, obviously for the 24 hour period. Now here's the motor actually running, and as you can see inside there we've got the uh, gear at the back here which is actually just turning at a fairly slow speed, but uh, of course the others don't appear to be moving because the reduction is such that uh, we're only going to move sort of once per hour or something until you get to the front which of course is uh, once per day, but uh, nevertheless it still does work, and uh, really there's not much else to go wrong, it's simply a motor and a selection of gears, uh, most of which are actually brass and uh, fairly high quality. Now here's a much closer view, and uh, you should be able to see the uh, gear at the corner of the uh, picture here it is very slowly turning, so it's uh, almost impossible to notice, but if you look carefully it is actually moving very slowly in that direction there. So of course the others here will be uh, appear to be stationary, even though of course they are actually moving at an extremely slow rate. And there it is all uh, put back together. And so to take it out, you have to actually remove the uh, whole face and then remove the actuating arm here. And then the whole lot comes out and you have to sort of faff trying to get it through the uh, slot there. And of course on the back it's just two screws which are basically there to stop the actual thing rotating within the case. But uh, say fairly uh, easily repairable if it uh, did go wrong. The only thing that's likely to fail is the actual motor, and even that's uh, relatively unlikely. And so the case itself is obviously a separately made item. And then the clock itself, of course, just drops down in the back there onto those two threaded studs. And then it's just a matter of the uh, extended rods there with the thread on the end, which simply screw over those to secure it in position. So that's it back inside. It's a nice green painted case. And in case you're wondering where the earth connection was, bearing in mind we are not the line, switch line, and neutral inside, then the answer is on the bottom here, just got that single screw there where you just simply attach the earthing cable to. That connects to the metal case, and of course, uh, via that through the case of the metal timer inside. So, a little there at the Horseman WSM time switch, and so this one comes to this nice uh, cast metal casing. These were made in a variety of other types as well, so uh, may have a look at some of the other styles at a later date. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.